I came down with Lyme disease in 1992, and um, it was as if the devil just pulled out all stops and threw everything that he had at me. I was, I would have hallucinations where I'd see people standing in my bedroom. I had terrible gut problems, migraine headaches, um, cognitive problems. I couldn't recall words. I had trouble speaking. Um, I had trouble walking. Um, terrible high fevers. I would not be able to eat. Um, and over time, this got worse and worse. Uh, so now, for, it got, those who, for those who don't know, Paula, what is Lyme disease? It's a, a bacterial infection transmitted by a tick bite, which I got. And it comes along with other infections as well called co-infections. So I had this bath of infections in my body from an insect, basically. Um, and from the moment I got bit, I became very, very sick. I was in bed for about 10 months. The first 10 months I was sick. Can you just repeat what the symptoms were and how they affected you? Yes, I started out with um, migraine headaches, uh, hallucinations where I'd see figures in my bedroom. Um, I'd wake up and there'd be people standing there, which is very frightening. Um, terrible gut issues. I had trouble eating. Um, I actually would have gallbladder attacks that were very painful, balance issues. It affects the entire body. So anything that can go wrong basically was going wrong. Um, trouble breathing, asthma. And then I developed these uh, allergies, which I'd take allergy tests and they'd be fine. And yet I couldn't eat. I couldn't take medications. And there were things that would... Um, one day they'd be fine, the next day I'd be in the hospital having an allergic reaction. So it was this craziness that was going on for years, literally decades. How bad were some of these reactions? Were they anaphylactic? Yeah, I did get anaphylactic. Um, it wasn't a true anaphylaxis, but it's like a step down. So it's like you almost die, but don't quite. And so they're very frightening because you can't breathe, your throat gets closed. Um, the heart rate goes extremely high. There's a chemical dump that happens in your body and there's confusion and argumentativeness and it's very, very tough. It's a whole syndrome that you go through and you need hospitalization because they have to make sure that you can breathe. So it'd be off to the hospital all the time and dragging medications with me and, you know, getting Scott up in the middle of the night, Scott, I'm having another one, you know, and he'd be half asleep driving me to the hospital or whatever. And, you know, it, it was more challenging for the people around me, I think, because, you know, Scott would be like, what can I do? And there really was nothing he could do except pray for me, really. An AV node arrhythmia, it's a part of the heart that's electrically not working properly. And Lyme attacks the heart. It's, it attacks every organ system in the body. And so um, that began in 2000. So for 20 years, I'd had these attacks of arrhythmia, wrong heartbeats, get up in the middle of the night, and your heart is just stopped, and you're, you're just a moment from collapsing dead. And so Many times we go to the hospital and they'd, they'd treat me like a heart patient immediately. They'd take me in and they'd put all the wires and all the things on you. And, you know, you get this nice hospital bill. We don't know what it is, but have a nice day. And so that was very difficult, too, because it caused great fatigue. I was like a heart patient. Um, there'd be pains in my chest and my heart was fine. The tests were fine. And yet there was this electrical problem. So that was one part of it. I had asthma. I had migraine headaches that were debilitating for weeks on end and arthritis in my neck and back everywhere. I had an injury that was inflamed and it was very painful, painful sitting, painful walking, painful laying, painful standing. I'd be in bed nine days at a time because I couldn't move from so much nerve pain. Nerve pain is very, very painful. Um, and so there was that, that aspect of it the breathing aspect the eating aspect really literally so, all you know so paula what foods could you eat <laughs> um at one point i was only able to eat potatoes and water and um i was literally dying that was in 2003 and i spent 10 days at the mayo clinic where i brought a 16 inch high stack of medical records saying this is lyme this is what i've been dealing with 
Um, and it caused me to have tumors and operations and I lost some organs and things like that. And so they, here I am eating potatoes and water and I'm down to like 98 pounds and I normally weigh 125. So that was a drastic loss of weight. Um, and I had survived already um, a partial paralysis in my, my shoulder and arm. I couldn't pick up anything with my arm. My arm was useless. My neck was like frozen like this. And, um, and I had Bell's palsy. So most of my face had been paralyzed for about two and a half months. It was very, very painful because the, I had the ear manifestation. The ear gets very, very swollen. I have pictures. I can show you what that looked like. Um, and that would be good for people to see because it's really a dramatic illness. It affects every part of you. And so I had some, you know, paralysis. I had speech problems. I had cognitive issues, terrible, terrible nerve pain. And I, I didn't want to die. I just didn't know how to live. And so I'm at Mayo Clinic just going, what am I supposed to do? You know, you don't know what it is. You don't know how to treat it. And you're just going to send me home. Should I just go home and not eat and then die? And I guess the doctor was having a bad day that day, but he said to us, that's one way of handling it. And we're like, seriously? So, Paula, let's hear from Scott. Scott, what was it like as a husband with a very sick wife and how did it affect you? Because um, it was stressful. Um, never know when she's going to have an attack. Um, always ready to be ready to go to the hospital. Um, financially, it was devastating. Um, I worked as much overtime as I could and have to be there for her too. And so it was a stressful time and, and it was hard too, cause I, I want to help and there was nothing I could do. And with trying different foods, we, um, try different things and have reactions. Um, so what was the turning point, uh, Paula? Well, we kind of skipped over a couple of things, if I can just tell you how bad it was. Yeah, keep I had, going. I had to keep a database of everything I ate for years, to, and I have to read every ingredient to try to pinpoint what were these triggers that were causing this problem, and it ended up being a whole long list of things. So literally, I got to where I was afraid to eat food. So I had this terrible fear, demonic presence I would take every of my every bit of my own food everywhere I went. I had a medical bag I took everywhere I went. Um, I couldn't eat at people's houses. I, I didn't eat in restaurants for over 20 years. It was very challenging to travel anywhere because besides the physical stuff, I couldn't eat anything. So I realized at the potatoes and waters point, I have to get to the bottom of this or I'm going to die because literally there was no advocate for me. This precious man worked all the hours he could. We still got bankrupted. We still had all these different things in the family going on. I lost my children because of we got dragged through the court system and that it was terrible. Um, so that was as bad as it could be. And I basically said to uh, the Lord, you know, if you want to take me now, I'm ready, Lord. I just, I don't know how to live like this anymore. And so in, in uh, De December, I'm sorry, it was, it was Christmas. Yeah, December of 2019, we had invited a couple of families to, um, we did a Christmas dinner for them. They didn't have a lot. And so we thought we'll gift them with this. And so they, they stayed. And I made the stuffing for them that I knew I couldn't eat. And I was just like smelling it and enjoying the smell. And oh, I wish I could eat this, but I know I can't because it's on the list of you can't eat this. And so, um, the Lord led me to your videos and I started watching them at night because I just, I, I would have insomnia for days. I'd be up for days. I wouldn't be able to sleep. It, it, this messes up your entire system. So I'm like, okay, there's, there's some videos. I'll just watch these. And the first one I saw, um, I was like, that's the Holy Spirit. I mean, I recognized the Lord. I'd been seeking him for a while. I'd been in different religions and they were just dry and lifeless. And I spent two and a half years, literally, I have a stack of notebooks where I spent two and a half years solidly day and night in the Bible, seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord, studying scripture. And um, 
he actually came to me one night and said, shall I pass by? And I'm like, no, Lord, stay here. I want to talk to you, you know? And so um, my faith was elevated to a point, but it needed more. And so he led me to your videos. I started watching them and I just was like, wow, I have been looking for you, Lord. There you are. I'm going to soak up as much of this as possible. And I started watching the videos back to back at night and I watch them in the daytime too when I wasn't like sleeping because I was tired and stuff. I just thought I'm going to absorb as much anointing as I can get, you know, maybe it's going to rub off and that. Um, and, and it really did. So the night that I was watching two videos back to back, um, it was just something that was said in the video about um, making fear commanding fear to go. And I'm just like, you know what? I've been living with this a long time. I am done being afraid of food. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm going to eat some stuffing. And it was two 30 in the morning. And I'm like, the fear side's going, Oh, you're going to have an attack and you're going to have to wake your husband up. And I said, you know what? Be quiet. I'm going to eat the stuffing. So I said, Lord, if this kills me, hallelujah, I'm going to have stuffing. So I got up, ate the stuffing, and I was perfectly fine. So I was like, yes, I'm cured. Woo. And so then the next day, my husband had brought some muffins home and they're on the counter and I hadn't had a muffin in over two decades. And I'm like, oh, yes, I, I love these. I've got to have one. Can I, Lord, you know, I'm asking. He's like, you know, you want to eat one. And he's like, go ahead. I said, okay. So I bit in and I'm like, nothing's happening. I can eat. And now in the middle of a mouthful, the Lord says, now read the ingredients. I said, or, or, or you know, cause my mouth is full. I look at the ingredients cause it's processed food and I never ate processed food two things on the ingredient list were on the list of triggers for anaphylaxis and there was nothing happening. Praise God. So I was like, I'm cured, you know? So it was exciting because what else can I eat? What else can I eat? So for like two weeks, I ate everything. My first grilled cheese in 20 years, I had grilled cheese every day for every meal. So it was such a relief. This fear was just broken off of me. I was no longer afraid of food, afraid of putting anything, of trying new things, putting anything in my mouth. I mean, contact things would set off anaphylaxis. An insect bite would set off an anaphylaxis. And I got stung by a bee twice and I had no reactions. I'm just like, I'm healed. I'm bonafide, really healed. Praise the Lord. So since that time, um, I was delivered of two demonic spirits just from Scott and I praying in the way that we learned from your videos, which has been such a blessing. How long has it been now that, that you've been able to eat normally? Six months since December. Yeah, six months. Wow. Six months. So you want to go and get something that would have previously been like poison to your system and just show everyone how you can eat now? Scott, grab some bread. I couldn't eat bread. It had like baking soda and things like that and uh, phosphates. Phosphates were a terrible trigger. Uh, filler ingredients in the salts that would trigger anaphylaxis. So I couldn't have anything with salt. I couldn't have this. I couldn't have that. And the things I could have were a shorter list. I could tell you, well, I can have apples. I can have this, 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 and this, and that's it. And so it was like apples, corn. For a while, I ate baby food bananas. It was, it was ungodly is really what it was I don't think we have any cheese to eat. <laughs> okay so just just show the camera what you're going to have this is a piece of bread i would not have been able to eat before because of the phosphates the baking phosphates and the well the salts that are in it and some of the other ingredients and i actually and had a piece what of would bread. happen if you ate bread before I'd go into an anaphylactic reaction. I would, uh, my face would start flushing. I'd have trouble breathing. Uh, my heart rate would go up and I'd start having this chemical mess in my body that made me really gnarly and, and argumentative and smell bad and all these terrible things shake. I'd have tremors for 45 minutes. It'd be horrible. So, so uh, yeah, to the glory of God, you show people how you can eat some bread now. Just, yeah, just take, take some and, and have some. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to do that. So, in fact, today I thank so, the Lord. I said, this is the, the bread for my body, but Lord, you're my bread of life, and I eat you every day. And without him, I would not be here. Time and again, he has rescued me in my life. 
And there is no testimony that is great enough to give him the glory that he deserves. There really isn't. What was it like when she was healed? Well, you know, she started eating and, you know, were you afraid that she'd have an anaphylactic uh, bout or what? No, because uh, she got up at 2.30 uh, a.m. and I was sleeping and when, I, when uh, I woke up in the morning, she told me her testimony and what, what she was praying and what she did. And I said, thank the Lord, you're healed. There's no more. We don't have to worry about food anymore. Normally I would bring home food that I would eat while she's eating everything. <laughs> And now I am. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, he had his food and then I had my food. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And just the joy of being free of that fear. Um, it, it transcended onto me too. And I had the joy too. And I didn't have to worry about is the car full of gas so that we can make it to the hospital. <laughs> You didn't um, have to read, yeah. read labels anymore. I didn't have to read labels every time I go to the store. And, and every single thing I picked up, I had to read the labels and, and the, pro, the ingredients in it. Total bondage. Um, well, I had a bone infection in my face, terrible sinus infection that went systemic, and a root canal that had infection over it. So my whole body was very, very septic. And... Um, I thought I was going to die, actually, but we prayed, and the Lord touched me daily. I continue to watch the videos, and all of that has been healed. He came into our living room um, at the first miracle meeting. I actually saw him in the Spirit standing in the living room, and I was like, yes, Jesus is here, and he's going to do a work. And um, before we even got prayed for, we were worshiping the music, and he came on me as a fireball and did all these wonderful things. He healed a neck problem. I was having uh, vertigo with my neck because I've, I've had fractures in my back, and they, they're very arthritic, and so they're a problem. And now I don't have any of that. The sinus infection's gone. The neck problem, vertigo's gone ear pain and that's gone. Um, my eyes were extremely dry. I was having terrible trouble seeing and that is markedly improved. It's still a little blurry, but it comes and goes. And I actually read the Bible for the first time um, yesterday without glasses, which I haven't been able to do in about six years. So that was exciting. So God is healing everything. I don't have migraine headaches. I don't have trouble sleeping. I go to bed and I'm out. Um, I don't have insomnia. I don't have uh, terrible nightmares. I used to have nightmares, that demonic nightmares. Um, I got delivered from two very large spirits that well, I had a long time. And with that, some of the health issues lifted as well. So sometimes the health is connected to the deliverance that we need. And um, it's, it's done a tremendous work in me. I don't have anxiety. Um, I don't have any more word finding difficulty. I had trouble. I'd say shoe instead of lamp or something like that. I'm like, where'd that come from? And, um, there's like, like we said, I can eat, I can eat again. I can sleep again. I can walk. I can lay down. I don't have the pain that I used to have. I was in pain daily. Yeah. It was, so, it Paula, was so Paula, basically from what I understand, you watch the videos Believing yes. that the anointing of Jesus Christ that was upon other people who were being healed and delivered would also heal and deliver you. Absolutely. I watched it in faith. I mean, I'd been seeking the Lord. I loved the Lord. Um, I didn't understand a lot of things because of wrong teachings and that. So there was some revisions that had to go on in my thinking. But I was always open. And I heard Jesus' voice as a child. It's just that I turned away from him. Um, and kind of got lost in there, but he didn't turn away. And so I, I said, you know, I recognize you here. I, I see you moving. And I know that everybody, you know, he's no respecter of persons. So everybody is that has faith, like qualifies. He'll, he'll heal you. He'll heal you. He'll heal the next person. You just have to come with faith and expectation that, you know, the word says I can have this. I want it. You know, Lord, I've been suffering long enough. I deserve this. I'm supposed to be your daughter. 
I want to be healed too. And I needlessly suffered for decades because I had the head knowledge, but I didn't understand how to connect. You know, I thought I knew what faith was, but faith is not an understanding. It's a desire in your heart. And so, and it's a belief that what he says is real. You know, we, we learn that God says, you know, we have to first believe that he is. And we'd say, oh yeah, we know that. But do you really know it in, in your heart? And so I was just like one step away. And I think that the Lord brought me to your ministry to take that next step. Lord oh. Jesus, <laughs> what Thank can you, I Lord, say? For all the blessings. What can I say? What can we say? There's, there are no words, Lord. We bless you. Ah. We praise you. We glorify you. We dedicate our lives. Everything we can be and do is for you, Lord. All I can do is praise the Lord, <laughs> thank him for all the gifts he's given us, all the the life he's given us. Um, with the chronic illness, you have no life. Yeah. Now we have life. And with that life, we can better serve him because he gets all the glory, all the praise. Thank you, Jesus, 